the good news is uh, we will have Dani Foster to be with us for many sessions in the future. Uh, he's going to be officially uh, help us in terms of life management God's way. He's a, a pastor. He's a man with a, a CA and his own accounting practices. And then uh, also an author of books and a public speaker. And I know him for many years. And uh, without any further ado, Donnie, over to you. So uh, let's get on with the session. Thank you very much, Jasper. Jasper is a good friend. Um, we know each other for at least 40 years, since 1980s, and I knew his father as well prior to that. So I'm as old as his father, but uh, he's not 40. I promise you he's lying if he did say so. So uh, I'm, I'm I just turned 70, so we're giving away our age so we can give you the, the wisdom that we have learned through all our mistakes and uh, other people's mistakes. So tonight we're going to talk about life management God's way. It's a privilege to be addressing you. Uh, if you're not attending live, uh, you have the, the privilege or the benefit of the recording, uh, which Jasper will control on his side. Um, the presentation is copyrighted, but I'd love you to share it with whoever. We're not charging anybody for this. So the bottom line is tonight we're going to talk about life management. Uh, we had a start already, so let me try and recap what we are trying to do. And um, I'm going to switch off my... Uh, face there and just give you a picture so I can move around the screen easily and uh, I'm looking down on the screen so it looks like my eyes are closed most of the time so thank you very much so life management God's way and let me just say this again but I'm going to say things which I've said in the last 10 minutes when we tried to do the recording without luck uh, life management God's way everything God's way is the right way because that's the one way it's the only way and life management, God's way, is what it's all about. When we talk about life, we're talking about time. We're talking about not only do we know when we talk about life, uh, or sorry, we talk about time, we, we say time is money. But it's not correct because that's a half truth, probably a quarter truth. Because life management tells it, uh, when we talk about time, we are in fact not only talking about time we're talking about your life it's your whole life we're talking about so the first session there are sounds interrupting there again please if you can just switch off your, your, your uh, the outgoing sounds there uh, the first session we're going to do tonight um, is seven days time planning and we're going to talk about your end of life checklist which is a book i wrote i've written many books you'll see on the link that jasper um, has sent you with the, the original link, uh, there is a, a link to the Amazon where the author page and my books are. Uh, they're not for free, but uh, they're priced, uh, you know, very low. Sometimes we do a giveaway, but uh, we can talk about that later. Uh, I think the long and the short is the first session of in total seven, which we're going to do this year. Um, uh, Jasper will control the date. Uh, tonight is the first. It's the intro session. And we are talking about time, because if you see seven days, time planning, and your end of life checklist, uh, you'll see the common denominator is time. But it's not the only thing we're going to handle. We're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about your identity. And we're going to talk about even energy going forward. But the main one tonight, because this is where it all starts. When we talk about life management, we're not talking about your money, because a baby of six years hasn't got money. Unless, unless he inherited already, but he has got a life. So when we talk about life, we talk about your past, present, and your future. Um, seven days, time planning, and then we'll conclude with your end of life checklist. We only got half an hour, probably less now, but have a look at this. Tonight, it's all about time. It's about time. Two meanings. It's about time that we know this, and it's also about Time And you'll see there are periods, full stops behind each letter. There's a reason. Uh, this is an acronym. I'm giving you the benefit of that giveaway already. Look at what it stands for in my life. It stands for time, talents, your intellect, your ID, your influence, 
The M stands for money and management. And uh, we'll even talk about management, which is a word I coined using the word money and then completing it with G-E-M-T, G -E -M -T, management, then energy. Uh, I've written books about some of these things. You can find it there on the um, Amazon uh, Kindle platform. Now, tonight is also about realizing this is me. There's a song out. I heard it this afternoon. Uh, it's Mother's Day. My daughter, one daughter came visiting. And I said to her, wait a minute. Uh, there's a song. This is me. So we went to Deezer and I, I picked it up. I'm, I'm very much, uh, you know, I love technology and I use all these apps. And this is me. Look at what it spells there. T-I-M-E. You notice that. It's all about realizing it's you we're talking about individually in your first person. Now, I've written some books, as I said. Uh, this one is a $1 book we'll find on the author page, uh, which you can, you can actually have a sample and read some of it there. Um, uh, seven days, and then it's time. We always, we always say, time, gentlemen, or it's time. And even when you know and watch cricket, you'll see people say, time, gentlemen, and they remove the veils. So it's time. Um, there you have a picture of uh, a view from Jeffrey's Bay. I've got a place there over the, the, the lagoon there and also the Caballos River. And this is a placid picture. This, this is where we want to be. But um, let me go to 2 Peter 3, verse 8. Now, you'll see these are excerpts from my books. Um, uh, we obviously going to discuss the whole book here. But what we'll do is, this is an introduction when we talk about seven days. God gives us, the book's name is Seven Days. The subtitle is God gives us seven days to complete our creation. How far are you? Now, God has made us co-creators. He's the creator of you and, you and myself and the heavens and everything in, uh, on, you know, on the earth. He says there, and this is where Peter talks, he says, but beloved, let not this one thing be hidden from you, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now read that, you'll see it's correct. God has made us his co-creators. It's a statement I've made because I've experienced it. God has given us these talents to create and co-create with him. So during the course of our lives, we occasionally discover things that have a profound impact on us. I recently, now that was like about 10, 15 years ago, I stumbled across an insight that changed my whole outlook on life. This is what I'm trying to share with you, so it changes yours as well. What I'm about to share with you will touch and change your mindset for keeps. To the glory of God, impacting the quality of your thoughts, as well as the way you spend the rest of your days. That's the excerpt of the book, which you'll find on Kindle. Now, I'm going to do, let me just have one more excerpt here, and then, um, then we'll show you something which will probably stun when you see it the first time. God has given us a limited time span in years to complete our creation. I'm quoting there from Psalm, uh, Psalm 90, verses 8 to 12 in the, uh, the English Standard Version. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. In Afrikaans, there's a very nice saying, and the Lord says we've got to take note and count our days and make more of our days than money. That's what the Lord says. Now, let me just give you this one as well. There is a formula which I've discovered that God has given us. And this is, as I say, just three excerpts from the book. Uh, there's a simple formula. With God, a thousand years is one day. We just read it. So in the case of our lives, if we're talking 70 years, 10 years is likened to one day. 
We therefore have around seven days to build him a place of glory, a temple not one made with hands of a man, but with the hands of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure we all, and we, you know, we're not going religious here. I'm just saying there is a fact. We, we are all around for about 70 years. And uh, if you look at the average global expectation of life when it starts, we're talking about, I've uh, discovered about 64 years. That was a few years ago. So from where we stand now, God says, if you likened your life to a week, seven days, then you'll make an interesting discovery. Look at that. There's a calendar. It starts with one and it goes through to seven. Let's say that was a Monday. Starts on a Monday, it works through to a, to a Sunday like today. Now down, down the bottom, you'll see there's an age range. From zero to 10 is day one. And then there, you can work it out. Now, if I quickly close this, <laughs> If I quickly close this, because uh, I'm sure you looked at it already, I would like you to place yourself uh, on which day are you at the moment. So let's, for example, say you are 49 years old. Where would you expect on which day would you find yourself? Is it um, a Wednesday, a Thursday, or a Friday? Uh, we're not going to push put, put up our hands now, but uh, it's it's quite powerful if you realise that you're probably further than you thought, because if you're 41, of course you're 49 as well, you're actually already on the Friday. You're not on the Thursday. So you know what happens on weekends? You know, we take it off. Uh, we take the time off and um, we enjoy it. Now, if that is true, um, where are you? Look at that. I've already passed the seventh day and, um, I realized something wonderful, which I didn't know when I wrote the book. Uh, this is a revelation God has given me at the time. But I've discovered something else, which I won't share with you now. But uh, my father became 80, he was 86 years, and he was on his seventh day. So basically, if you're over, if you're over 61, or over 60, you find yourself on a Sunday. And if you probably, if you look at the time now, uh, you probably, um, if you're 69, you're probably somewhere around 9 30, 10 o'clock on a Sunday evening, and it's time to go to work tomorrow. But you won't work because it's your seventh day. So, this is indeed the day of the Lord. Could be your last day. It's definitely your last day in context of the God's, God's economy. I'm sure that must have uh, triggered some thoughts. Now, I wrote here in principle, we can argue that God has given us a quota of seven Thai years to accomplish. To, uh, to complete accomplish, and say it again, to accomplish his purposes in our lives, including our childhood and retirement years. He will judge our work when we're done and when we have seven days only, and then it's time. So that was my introduction to then it's time. So something which I've, over the years, if we had time, we could actually ask, uh, get you to ask questions now. You're welcome to do it at the end of this. Thanks, uh, Jasper. If we have time, we can allow a couple of questions. Um, how to plan your day then? I mean, remember, uh, the way you plan your day is also the way you plan your week, the, day, the way you plan your month. I always plan my year in advance. Uh, obviously not. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we, you know, we fill in what we know the known figures, and then the unknown items will add themselves. And then you do a, a monthly and a weekly and a daily program. Now, whether you're in business for your own account or we, whether you are, in fact, um, a salaried employee, uh, it, it works the same. You just have more leeway, obviously, if you work for yourself. But you, uh, when it rains, it rains. You, you, you've got an umbrella if you work for a boss because... You know, when it rains, uh, you know, you can go to the trade unions and, you know, try and get some more money. But so, you know, uh, uh, J.D. Rockefeller made a statement. He says, what we must know is that we must always work on the basis of make, making sure that the main thing stays the main thing. We lot, we're doing lots of things, but we must make sure that we identify the main thing in our lives and uh, then work around that. So. How do we plan our day if we don't just look at the days, but we look at the following? 
they will see if you prioritize in terms of categories uh, you'll see we obviously you'll see there are seven days to the right on the um, on that picture there um, we're always working in dollars we're making dollars let's talk Z-A-R, rands we're talking yen pound whatever you do to earn your money so that is normally the first item when we start planning but i've only got three there there's the work and the money and the dollar thing obviously and then there are maintenance items you know we're managing things which don't earn us money we maintain them it actually costs us money and then you have a life um you want to plan your life when do you do exercises when do you preach when do you do your writing when do you share when do you do you know what you really want to do so I think the first item on that uh, summary would be, what do I do? And the last one would be, if I had the time, what would I do? So um, that is how we spend our lives. And as a result, that, as a result of that, we discover uh, an incredible thing. We discover we're always in this area. Um, we're always in this area. We're working and we're working. And, um, you know, we, we, we earn earn money and we spend our days and we plan our days around this. The problem is we can't spend all our days there, all our time there, because when do we get here? When, when do we get in this area? When do we spend? And this is why we don't, because we're always working there or we work and we do our maintenance, things break and we got to, you know, replace them. So from that point of view, I'm saying uh, there's something wrong with the model. So how do we fix it? I'm sure if you, uh, look, if you look closely, you will discover you do it this way. You start with your life, the things that you want and need to get to, which are important, the eternal value things. So things uh, that don't necessarily earn you money, they might actually earn you money, but uh, then it's God's grace that give you. The maintenance item, break, things breaking and uh, maintenance, managing your life investments books property and all that that will be in the middle section and then i'm sure if you get it wrong you'll probably get no money because we'll do all the stuff in the life and ministry and maintenance area and never get to the the area uh where we need to in fact earn money so the secret is to start there and how do we do it so it's one two and then we get there so it's not a uh, very good art here but i've got to actually just use the tools to my my disposal i think some of the the uh, pointers were a bit thick so let's just reduce them a bit um so the main thing is if we in fact then look at this summary here i'm just gonna move it up uh, it just got stuck for a minute there uh just wipe this um if you now look at this, there I've given you some meat. Um, just have a look and see what I mean by life and ministry. TPOP stands for the power of planning. Monitoring things. Where do you do exercise, prayer, meditation, family, friends, uh, ministry, writing, preaching, or whatever you do to share your life with others, which has an eternal worth. Life is not about money only. Maintenance, we do admin, we do all kinds of things. We do fix our properties, we pay money there. Motor vehicles break, investments must man be managed. And then we have a general section. Um, if it doesn't fit in there, and you can obviously extend that list and give more detail. But then it comes to your clients and the work that you are obviously getting paid for. And this is where um, I'm going. Just to summarize that, you start there normally. But the secret is to switch it around and then getting your priorities right. Remember, it's all about time. So this is the second section I wanted to share with you. Uh, I'm a bit rushed. If I had more time, I could say more. But uh, the books say much more. And uh, we can elaborate uh, at some other stage again. Um, if you can't afford buying the books, the idea is not to buy the books. This is how uh, you know, these people work at Amazon. Um, I get uh, a small commission, so I don't take the money, 
but it's just there to, for your you know, to facilitate you reading it. If you haven't got the money, you can always draw down a sample and you'll probably be able to read 10% of the book. That's how they work. And, and just whet your appetite and see whether it's something that you love to do. Now, your end of life checklist. This is the, um, uh, I'm trying to make it smaller, but I'm not succeeding. You'll see there's the cover of the book, your end of life checklist to help you plan for a victorious end. See, there's a rainbow and there's a passport. So this is something which we're working towards. This is the contents of the book. I'm just gonna go through it. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm just gonna touch on something here. Remember we're talking, first we talked about um, uh, seven days. Then we talked about how to manage your life congruently with your uh, dreams and your goals. And then I wrote this book about the sober realization. One day you wake up and you realize time has gone and uh, I'm probably not at the beginning of my life anymore and I need to do something. You probably discovered it already when you did the seven day grid. The, the benefits of pre-mortem is incredible. Now we talk about post-mortems. This is what we do when we in fact, um, uh, you know, a, you know, a lake scone, that's what a post-mortem is. You know, it's too late for the person who died to find out how he died. So a pre-mortem is something which is a business tool to, in fact, um, look into the future and then do an analysis of the things that might actually cause me to fail. So this is a wonderful tool. I elaborate about that in the book. Uh, so uh, please keep that in mind. And then Spot three is becoming detached. Now, I will sum it all up like this. Um, becoming detached is, is necessary because we should ask God to take us away from our possessions before our possessions are taken away from us. It could be through a legal default or it could be something else. Uh, we're very attached to our things. Part four is closing the books. I'll just give you an example there what I mean. I believe as um, as people, we need, you know, aging, we should actually close the books at some stage in our lives. The best, best time to do that is now to, in fact, have a set of questions that you confront yourself with. This is what this checklist is all about, where you, in fact, sit down. Uh, I've discovered my birthday is the best day to do it. On the 12th of every month, I don't have um, an annual birthday anymore. I've got a monthly birthday. But then part five says, if you have three days to go, are you ready to go? Uh, I know you use the word die there. You know, it just means it's terminated. Now, Steve Jobs is something, said something which is really relevant. I mentioned it in the book and elaborate. He said when he was um, uh, about 30 years prior to his uh, chat at the University um, of Stanford, he said, Something that triggered him when he was young is somebody actually said, um, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you don't enjoy what you're doing, you've got to ask yourself, why am I doing this? And is this very important? He says, after a few days, you should probably, if you're not enjoying it and it's not what you want to do, you should have a serious look of, uh, you know, in the career that you are now. I don't, we, I don't think today we can do that easily because uh, we're talking about unemployment yet. But he also makes a statement. He says, if you get up every morning asking, thinking it might be your last day, he says one day you'll be right. Now that is quite a sober statement. Part six, I've got a marking plan there um, in the book that, uh, that really will help you because it helped me. I wrote it over many years. Um, uh, because there's only one marking plan that counts and that's God. So uh, go and look at the Bible. I'm not going to go through that now. There's a lot of stuff in my book. And then um, dealing with the end first. I'm saying, uh, don't wait until the end and then start. You should actually start now ending. In other words, deal with the end first. And what do I mean when I say this? I'm going to give you some clues. Now, just read with me and follow through. Life, these are extracts from my book. Life is the canvas on which we scribble and draw what we are thinking and dreaming about. We meander through life sometimes aimlessly, especially in our younger years. 
sometimes in a more structured way towards dreams and goals far, far away. You know, we get this far off look in our eyes when we plan and dream, paying very little attention to the limitation of the canvas. That's what I was trying to say with the seven days and where do you plot yourself? Now, if you would take the time and find the courage to stand up to the fears about the end of your life. Now, this is a haunting, a daunting task, actually. But if you, if you could stand up, if you had the, the courage, and that you could actually challenge your end. Um, you know, life, uh, let me just say again, you challenge the fears about the end of your life that haunt you day and night with deep self-search and honesty, like, for example, a Sunday evening, like tonight, you know, it's dark outside. And um, in Afrikaans, I've got a very uh, uh, interesting saying, which I coined many years ago. I talked about gedachtes in gedachtes. <laughs> now, that's a silly thing. I'm saying it's not the gedachtes that is worrying us. It's a gedachtes about it might, especially when you wake up in the morning and the gedachtes are still there, you know, uh, you've got to do something. You will discover a freedom and boldness which will surpass your wildest imagination. I know what I'm talking about. I've gone through this a few times. And I come out on the other side normally saying, that was a wonderful challenge. It's like, you know, climbing a wall, or climbing a hill. Um, so instead of fear, which is just the shadow of death. Fear is not death itself. It's just a shadow of death. Um, then we find... This is what I say here. Fear is the shadow of death, not death itself. Once you have taken care of the given, you know you're going. You're going I mean, you're going to, we're all going to die sometime. So either it's by the way of the rapture, when, uh, you know, Christians believe, some Christians still believe there's a rapture coming where Jesus comes and he takes, takes everybody away simultaneously. And then uh, there's only two people who got raptured, uh, Elijah and Enoch. So, um, if we're not one of them, you know, there's a chance that we might actually go before the rapture takes place. So this is just to let you know, uh, fear is the shadow of death, not death itself. Once you've taken, the care, taken care of the given, which is, okay, I'm going to die at some stage, the unavoidable, the certainty in your life, you can plan and live accordingly without fear. If you take death out of the equation, you will find that fear also disappears. The shadow would have been exposed to what it is, what it is, harmless. Only the image of the real thing. You would then have confronted and conquered the fear of death by dealing with the reality of death itself and its consequences. You can now live with a certainty of your end in mind and thus make the best of your life and its opportunities. You can make the best decisions and select the best choices in support of your big life goals. This is not impossible. All you need to do is do it over a period of time. Um, you won't be able to do it in one moment unless there's an, a near-death experience. Now, in part six of the book, I say something which uh, Jasper said, you know, really made him think, and he loved it. Thank you, Jasper, for the feedback. I, I didn't know whether everybody would understand this, but I'm going to try. I'm almost done. I'm saying the only marking plan that really counts is um, is God's. Uh, simply put, life here on earth can be likened to an examination with a preparatory or theoretical phase. It's your childhood. You didn't know what's going on there. You went to school. But to Varsity, you probably didn't know what's going on there either. And then a practical exam period. This is, I can't tell you, uh, I think they say somewhere around uh, 14, 15, you become uh, you get to the age of uh, not only innocence, that's gone past. Uh, this is where you become accountable in law terms. But whenever that happens, there's a practical examination which lasts for the rest of our years. There's an assessment phase as adult where you are assessed as to who you are, uh, who have you become, what you do and what you did, and what you believe or what you believe. Now, that sounds complicated when you read it but I'm going to make it simpler to you. Initially, there's a theoretical phase where life principles are imparted to us, parents, society, teachers, institutions. But later, 
there um, something else happens. It culminates in a practical phase which takes the rest of our lives to complete. We bump our heads, we make mistakes, people tell us things, we don't believe them and it comes out the wrong way and then we learn something. This is where we learn most of our uh, wisdom by bumping our heads. There is the chance, there is no chance of any supplementary exams. You can't do a hair that can be taken. You only have one shot at this life. The examination can be seen as an open book examination where we have a limited time, and we're back to the time thing, in which, uh, in, in which to answer the questions posed and are allocated, and are allocated sufficient time for you to review and correct what is wrong. Now, what I've discovered, um, and this is, I think, the last slide, yes. What I've discovered, in preparation of your final hour, now, you know, we all have a final hour, we just don't know when. It could be today, it could be in 15 or 20 or 50 years. In preparation of your final hour, closing the book, so to speak, which I've talked about, challenging yourself and say, well, you know, I'm going to, at some stage, I've got to go, so let me just have a look and see whether I've got the right answers to the examination. You will find the book very helpful. And this is not about the book. I want you to prepare your own schedule. You need to understand and gradually work towards your end of life goal per the following framework. Now, all you need to do is look at the last let, last word on, on that. You'll see it says goal, G-O-A-L. I've discovered the secret is, and you can read that slide, it basically says you have to look at your relationship with God, first of all, and then you have to appreciate that there are others in your life. So you've got to love God. You've got to, you know, direct your life towards pleasing Him. You've got to look at your relationship with others, uh, forgive them, talk to them, make sure everything is fine there uh, before you go. And then the assets. How would you distribute your assets? Now, Jasper has written a brilliant book about legacy. And, you know, you know all about legacy is third generational, uh, uh, you know, philosophy, which is, really something to look into if you haven't have a look at it um asset distribution i'm not talking about that in the book or yeah uh, i even don't i actually refer to estate planning in the book and i give you a link but i'm saying this is not what this book is all about this book is not about your assets it's about you and then of course at the end you'll see there's the legacy so people can see what you are doing yeah it's it's got to be uh defined it's got to be visible we need to take ownership of our legacy, which is the last and lasting impression of our presence here on earth, our visible footprint. So it's about God, relationship, vertical relationship. It's about others, our horizontal relationship. It's about our asset distribution so it doesn't fall into the receiver's hands. Wrong people receive it or, you know, it gets lost because of uh, squabbles and disputes and uh, tax problems. And then, of course, your legacy. Legacy is the most important once you have looked at your relationship with God and others. The assets will take care of themselves if you use the opportunity correctly. Um, I'm sure this is, um, in summary, I'm sure this is something that uh, will make us think. It's about life management God's way. I think we all try and we've got tried and tested. Some of these tests didn't pass. Um, we didn't pass the test. We tried our own way. I'm saying I once saw um, a slogan on the back of a car where it says, you've tried everything else. Why don't you try Jesus? And if, if this was a sermon, I would have concluded like, yes, you've given everything else a shot, made a mess of it, see it didn't work. Why don't you try God's management uh, philosophy, which I've explained to you today?